Brian Aitney with Auto Success Magazine. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Um, I've got an all-star cast with me today. I have uh, Ted Dupuy from Flick Fusion, and I have Glenn Pash from PCG. And today, we're going to do this webinar a little bit differently than probably most that you've been on in the past. Well, today, I'm going to invite you guys to participate in this webinar in real time. And so there's a couple ways that you can do that. You are welcome to type in questions, um, and I will read them to our guests, and then they will answer them. And the way that you do that is dependent on your device. If it's a laptop, a tablet, or a PC, uh, there's a pane that says go to webinar, going on the right side of your screen, near the bottom, it says questions. Click on that little arrow that's pointing to the right, and it'll open up a place for you to type in the question. Type it in and hit enter, and we will answer your question. I invite you to do that throughout the webinar because we're going to answer your questions as they come in. Now, here's the part that might be a little different than any that you've been on in the past. We are also going to accept questions verbally. And the way that we do that is you're going to click on, you click on the hand to raise your hand, and then I'm going to unmute your microphone, and at that, and at that point you'll be able to talk directly to our guests, Glenn and Ted, and ask them questions, and uh, they will answer them, and uh, we'll have a live interaction. Now, a couple of things before we get started that I'd like to share with you. Um, if you're not aware yet, out of success, we were acquired by Babcox Media, and now we are a member of the Babcox Media family uh, of, of publication. And, and what does that mean to you? Well, in 60 days, we have a brand new website. Uh, came out on June 1st. 60 days after we were acquired, our brand new website came out. A lot of new content, a lot of good information. Uh, our new newsletter format came out uh, eight days later. Uh, another place with, for some great information. Uh, if, if you'd like, go to autosuccessonline.com and check it out. Uh, you can also sign up for that newsletter there. Um, now, one other thing. If you have not joined Auto Success Webinars yet, it's a group on Facebook. I invite you to go there. You just search Auto Success Webinars, request to join the group. Now, once you're a member of that group, you'll have access to the Auto Success staff access to our speakers, and most importantly, access to each other. Now, I, I invite you to go there and suggest topics you'd like to see us cover, suggest you know, guests that maybe we haven't had on yet or that you'd like to have back, and interact with each other because not one topic we've ever had on, on our auto success webinars was so simple that you could flip a switch afterwards and all of a sudden you were successful. You know, they all require multiple steps and work and trial and error and successes and failures, and I invite you guys to share those with each other and uh, you know, hopefully we can all achieve our goals a little quicker by uh, you know, helping some up, you know, maybe you could help somebody else avoid a pitfall or share a great idea or find a great idea. You know, with that being said, I would like to turn the floor over to our guests. Glenn and Ted, please take us away. Hey, thank you very much, Brian. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us today. I do believe that we do not have the webcam option today, um, and we were kind of hoping for that. Uh, it, Brian, uh, can you check on that to see if we have the webcam ability on uh, this presentation? Yeah. Let's see. Uh oh. Go ahead, Hannah. Will you will you go ahead and click on the webcam on on the on your go to webinar pane? Mm -hmm. um, yes. Stay in that and turn and turn on your webcam. Well, hang on. Give me one second. Where exactly is that? It's under audio. You'll have, it's, 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 or it's above audio. It's right underneath sharing. It's so sharing webcam audio. Click on webcam. Expand it and open it. Um, I'm sorry, I don't see this. Yeah. Uh oh. Well. You know what, Ted? If we make I don't a good webinar, maybe having maybe having an, an, uh, a technical issue. Um, that, that may be the case, and that's all right. We're just gonna we're we're just gonna go with the radio broadcast. How's that, Glenn? Not a problem. That's fine that with one, me. That's not a problem. We can we can after, roll. After after I did my hair and everything. I know, right? I even I even wore a shirt to the office today. Um, <laughs> so so my name is Ted Dupuy, and I'm with Flick Fusion Video. And um, I'm excited to have Glenn on on the uh, the webinar today. One of the reasons is, is I was in uh, in Vegas for the the National Independent Auto Dealers Association and, and had the pleasure of sitting in with with Glenn in his presentation about his book, the uh, the power of connected marketing. 
And one of the things that we, that we preach at Flight Fusion Video is is a video marketing strategy. And 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 real quickly, and I've talked about this on on several different webinars, is 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 our philosophy. And, and, and Glenn is more than happy to refute this because uh, him and I have not spoken of this, um, but it does correlate with a lot of stuff that is written about. Uh, is that um, when it comes to a dealership's video marketing strategy, first and foremost, let's start with what the customer's shopping for, and that's that's inventory. Uh, they're they're going to the VDP. Let's let the, the dealership should start there. Whether that's an automatic process based on your processes that you have in house, um, whether your process laden and you just want something automatic, or um, you're ready for that full motion video walk around that really engages the consumer. But next is the after that would be your value proposition videos. Uh, sell the dealership, sell yourself, sell the car. Uh, the customer's already there. You don't know why they're there, but this is a great opportunity to sell your dealership. Uh, uh, and then next uh, is segue into video video email. Uh, you know, the two to three hundred percent open rate um, versus regular email. This is a great opportunity to uh, capture uh, and follow up with the with the consumer and in 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 getting getting um, started with video email and, and, um, and that's a great point at that point to uh, to get started with that then then once we have this video marketing strategy in, in play and converting the traffic that you already have on your website um, that you're already spending a ton of money on uh, getting those folks to your website is uh, you know then you can segue into uh, you know video retargeting and doing other aspects with video uh, to drive more traffic to your website um, with that being said, I would like to introduce Glenn Pash for anybody living under a rock that has not heard of uh, uh, Glenn Pash. Um, he is uh, with Pash uh, uh, PCG Companies, and uh, he is the uh, author of uh, The Power of Connected Marketing. If we had video, I would show you the book and what the book looks like. And uh, Glenn, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, thanks. Uh, first off, I appreciate uh, being part of this. Yeah, we. Uh, PCG Companies is a full service marketing agency. Uh, our main focus is automotive, so we are the ones who will handle your online marketing. Uh, we work with partners who handle radio, TV, print, email. You know, our job is to uh, connect all of the marketing, and that's sort of why we originally, uh, myself, Troy Spring, Tracy Myers, partnered to write the book. Um, what we've been seeing what I've been seeing and why clients come to us is uh, we have a sort of an end-to-end -end view of marketing. You know, there are people out there who are going to give you, sell you a a tactic or a strategy, be it, you know, in this case, video. Right. They say, here's video. But the problem is, is that it, it, it can't just live, <clears throat> excuse me, can't live on its own. You need to have all of your vendor partners connect everything. Right, so if we're bringing the the uh, the videos, as Ted was saying, and you're you're going to be using video, well, how does that connect in your strategy? It can't just sit over in, in a silo somewhere and say, well, I'm, I'm just going to hire Ted. Ted's going to go do videos, and I got a traditional agency. They're going to run my radio, and then I got somebody else who does my SEO, and, so, and no one talks to each other. Versus looking at video, in this case, as a marketing channel. It's a tool that's going to amplify your message, just like your television commercial, your radio, your website. Everything is, is, is about why I should buy a vehicle from you, why I should get it serviced. As Ted said, what's your value proposition? Why should anyone want to do business with you? Then turn around and say, okay, what channels do I have at my disposal? Am I willing to invest in to push this message out? The key is everybody has to be connected at the table for the message. Message comes first, then channels. In a lot of cases, uh, when we have clients come to us and they ask us to work with them, when we investigate their strategy, it's reversed. They have tactics, they have vendors, and they're off doing things, but uh, it's product or service first, then we'll figure out a message versus no, here's the message, now let me choose what I'm going to do with video, with SEO, with SEM, with Facebook, all of that, if that makes sense to everyone. Oh, it definitely does. 
And uh, and one of the one of the first things that you talk about in, um, in you know I haven't finished the whole book, uh, but uh, one of the one of the first things you talk about is understanding the digital parallels. And right. uh, and 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 uh, you know I'm not going to read them all off right now, but they're on page seven for anybody following along. Um, they're they're nine, you you list nineteen parallels so like uh, you know television uh, is is now the YouTube or the Hulu and Netflix. Um, you know, there's there's 19 parallels, and and I put an asterisk by all of them that could include video, and um, and what what in video correlation, and there there's 10 of them, 10 out of 19 in you know that part video is part of those digital parallels, um, and you know just two pages later, uh, you're talking about why buy for me, and that's the number one that a dealership should look at, um, what is and you just referenced that uh, what their message why buy from me and there's a lot of dealerships that have that message and maybe it's buried in in, in text on their about us page or maybe it's buried in um, uh, a YouTube channel um, and it may be a great why buy video um, but uh, it, it you know it's buried somewhere obsolete that it, it's it's like you said it's it's um, in a silo somewhere um, not getting relayed to the uh, to the customers what um, when you say that uh, you know connecting your you know in connecting your marketing with video, where would you think? Where would you aside from a message? Where would you suggest that a dealership start? Perfect. So so if we think of again, I always reverse engineer uh, everything. So my thought to a dealer, if a dealer was sitting across from me and asked me that question, I said, okay, where, where should I use video? What I would first say to them or to their room of managers, where do you consume video, right? In your shopping experience, forget automotive. You know, we have a tendency to just, in automotive, we have a tendency to funnel and look just at automotive and we're looking at what our competitors do, uh, but yet, 99% of our time we're on Amazon and we're shopping and we're Googling and we're looking at things and we're using, you know, why does anyone go on YouTube? You know, a lot of times, it, you know, people don't understand it's a second biggest search engine. You know, so if somebody's like, how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I, I need to see this? So all of a sudden, if you step back and think to yourself, how do I use video? What would video, what would it make it easier for me if I saw a video, right? That's where I'd start. So for instance, I would be, besides your why buy message, I, as you said earlier, there should be a video on every single VDP, especially for your pre-owned, you know, certified used, whatever terminology you're using, because that, you know, static pictures are one thing, but being able to have a video, right? So that's one, you, you mentioned video communication. So if I'm calling up, about a certain vehicle, why wouldn't a salesperson walk out with their iPhone or Android phone and go do a quick walk around? Personal, hey, here, Ted, this is a, you know, you were looking at XYZ car, I just shot a quick video, as you can see, or now with the ability to live stream, right, to, to go FaceTime, hey, do you want to FaceTime and I'll show you the car? I mean, it's so easy. Now, however deep you want to get, is I would make everything in your business easy. We have a tendency to just default just to the vehicle because yes, they're doing, they're looking at inventory, but what about everything else that goes on? Why wouldn't you have a video on your on your F&I page talking about, hey, that's the F&I manager saying, hi, I just wanna welcome you to, uh, you know, Ted's Ford, and we're going to talk a little bit about the F&I process. When you come here, once you get by your vehicle or you decide on your vehicle, here's a couple things that you're going to do. Here's a couple things that you're going to need. It's going to take us about X amount of time. I just want to walk you through, give you a little heads up, right, blah, 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 blah. Or three common mistakes that happen that people forget to bring, or three things during the buying process. You could do that with service. You could do that across any of your uh, any of your uh, services inside the dealership, because remember, majority of your people, over half of the traffic to your website is on a mobile device. Video is easier than reading, right? So, so that's what I'm saying is that if you think about all of those things, those are helpful information. One is you're going to stand out because a lot of your competitors don't have that. Then, depending on how you want to, if you want to get into the game of increasing service, 
Well, why wouldn't your dealership be the how-to person in your market? How to fix this? Why do I have to change my oil? What? How do I know when to change my tires? How often should I do this? Why do I do it? That's what we do on YouTube. My kids do it all the time. I do it. I'm like looking for a recipe. How do you do this? How do you, oh gosh, I lost the instruction manual. All right, how do I fix this? How do I change the water filter on this? And I go find some YouTube, somebody who did a YouTube video, and I watch it. And I'm like, okay, that was helpful, right? So there's all of the places. It just depends on how deep you want to go down. But I'd start on every page that has some sort of something that someone could confuse, uh, meaning, you think it's clear of how the F&I process works. You think it's clear on how uh, a car is delivered. You think it's clear in terms of your service because you live it. Let's make sure that everyone understands how doing business with you fits. So that way the, the pictures in everybody's head are the same versus, hey, it's, we do a really quick job here. That, in my mind, could be a half an hour. In reality, in, in, service, in, in auto land, an hour and a half is fast disconnect all right so i know i rambled a little but video there's just so many places that you could do it but always start with you as a consumer when you're shopping what makes your life easier in terms of watching video and i think that's uh glenn you hit hit uh, a very key point in in the dealer world that when you know when was the last time the, anyone in a dealership actually purchased a vehicle from a dealership the, 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 the folks uh, that are in the dealership are living, living the dealership world. When you talked about, you know, the F&I process and, uh, yeah, everybody lives it so they don't understand um, what the consumer goes through. It's kind of like uh, you remember back, and it's only been, what, eight or nine years when, when there was only four photographs on a website. And why do we need to have more photographs on a website? Because the customer knows what the car looks like. No. You know what the customer, you know what the car looks like. The customer is, you know, now we're at what, 30, 50 photos of a vehicle because the customer, yeah, the customer knows what the car looks like. They want to know everything what the car looks like. So um, it's, it's getting past that hurdle of putting the customer's shoes on with, uh, with, with creating those videos, those why buy videos, those uh, uh how to videos and when well, you talk the, 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 the key the key is what you're saying ted is so true and sometimes again we all forget this is that we can we do it in real life we find anything we need by going on our phone and googling it or however whatever search engine, but most of it's google we just go search if i have any question i'm gonna go search that's what we do we have a tendency when we're running our own businesses to forget that because, well, we're running it. But everybody's looking for information. Everyone's afraid of, well, what if I give too much information? You should be more worried about if you don't give information. And, and someone said it, I don't know, one of the shows I listened to or was talking with someone, and it's true. A dealership should be looking at themselves as a media company. I just said this to a dealer the other day, so I was like, hey, this isn't my quote, but I'm stealing it. But you should, be a, you should be a media company. You're selling things. So why wouldn't you want to use everything at your uh, fingertips that you have available to you to make your product look fantastic? And one of the ways is video. Or why wouldn't you communicate everything? You should be giving more and more information out to the consumer, not less. That's going to win you business. I know it's a complete 180 from the way that dealerships always ran for years and years and years and years and years of they held all of the information. We had to come in because you were the experts. So you had to tell you were the keeper of the info. Not anymore. The consumer now has all the info. Your focus now is getting them to come into you. It's not about selling them the vehicle in terms of all the bells and whistles. They already know what they want. They already can find all of that. What you got to be selling them on is why you're the place to do business. And well, how I'm going to make the car buying experience easy, not the shopping. People like shopping. They uh, like test drive. Let's go look at the colors. Ooh, that's all great. It's the shopping experience. Well, how the buying experience is the pain. All of those things now, you should be like media. 
hey, here's our service department, here's our service tips, here's our F&I department, here's F&I tips, hey, and in your process, what you said earlier, Ted, was where can I put video in this whole shopping experience? So if I had an appointment, someone's coming in to buy and see the car tomorrow, well, then I'd be sending them a video from the F&I manager saying, hey, you're going to probably see me tomorrow. Um, just make sure I want to remind you to bring these couple things, right? Why wouldn't you? It's there. Um, and that to me is the problem is a lot of people are fighting it because still of that mentality of if I give the customer all this information, they're going to go down the street. No, if they contacted you, they've already knocked off two or three dealerships that they don't want to deal with because they didn't get the information. If they're reaching out to talk to you, they're narrowing it down to decide if they should get off the couch and come to you. So why not make it easier with video for them to break down the barrier of that scary dealership and connect with people who are inside the dealership. Oh, I like them. I see Ted. I walk in. There's Ted. He's the one who sent me the videos. Hi, Ted. Let's do business. You know, you, you hey guys, we've, got a couple, we've got a couple of questions, Ted, if you'd like to take I, them. Yeah, let's go. Um, how long should a walk around video be? Okay, that, um, that, that is going to, you know, there is some studies, out, I've heard some studies out there of 30 seconds to two minutes, and I am going to call BS on that, it based, because your consumer engagement is going to go on content. If you have a great car, um, you know, it, it all depends upon what you're shooting and how, how what the content of the video, you're going to have consumer engagement based on the content. Um, if you have a, um, a Yugo, I'm going to throw that out, not that there's any on anybody's lot anymore, but there's not much to the car, the, the, you could probably get everything in the car within 60 seconds. Um, but if you have a, uh, you know, um, a Porsche 911 and you want to get the motor running and you want to hear the, the exhaust and everything else, that, that could be a, a three minute, uh, three minute walk around. The other type of video that, uh, I know that are being done and are one of the most engaging videos is a delivery video as an inventory video. Um, there's a dealership doing those that I that I know of and I know their their video view rate and their do their video videos are anywhere from five minutes to eight minutes long and with an 85% engagement rate, meaning that 85% of the videos are getting you know they're 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 getting watched 85% on average and that's on average. With, with thousands of views, it's about what's on, what the content you're putting on the video um, is based on length. If they're just stock inventory videos, maybe a stitch photo video, they're, they're all going to be around uh, you know, a minute and a half, a minute, uh, you know, based on you know, what the uh, you know, automatic process. But as far as a full motion video walk around, um, it's all about what, what, what you're shooting. Okay. And would, would you, uh, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, we can jump to the next question, but my answer always is, it's as long as it needs to be. If it's good, I'll watch three minutes, four minutes, five, I don't care. If it's crap, I won't even watch 10 seconds. So it's really thinking before, and I and Ted, you, you alluded to this, but I really want to crystallize it in, is why are you making the video? If you understand why you're making the video, that will set the time. So even with a Porsche 911, what am I highlighting about the vehicle? What are the top two things or three things that I want to get across? Because either that's what the customer was looking for, that's what we had the discussion about, so that's what I'm highlighting. Even if it's a general uh, video for your page, a walk around, all depends on what. why did you make it? What are you highlighting? then that will set the time frame for because you have a plan for your video versus I'm just going to walk around and talk. If I don't have any purpose, you, you've lost me. So, okay. What's our um, next question? Our, our, next, our next question is, should we have multiple YouTube channels for sales, service, and an F&I? Um, um, I, uh, go ahead, Ted. <laughs> my my uh, and that kind of goes back to your YouTube channel it, with YouTube is the second largest search engine next to Google is a great place to have video. When you have a video, 
you want that consumer to watch that on your website. I would suggest that you get with your video pr provider, uh, your website provider, and figure out how to get those videos posted on your website, not on YouTube. You can put them on YouTube because you want them to be found there as well, but you want that consumer to come back to your website as the trusted source. You want your website to become the Google for them with how-to videos, with how to finance your car. When they're searching, you want them to actually come back to your website and go, hey, I know how to change my tire because of these guys. I know how to connect my battery. So they're actually coming back to your service pages with those videos. Um, that's the, the short of it. Uh, Glenn? Um, again, depending on what you're trying to accomplish, you could have them in, uh, you know, you could have it on a page on your website built out. So if you're creating blogs on the how to, right, so how to change my tire, and you have a video and you've built out a page on your site for a blog post of how to, great. Um, I think it's both. They could be in both places because it's all going to depend on how someone finds you. Right, but into the question was, should I have three different or four different YouTube channels? I say no. I would put it all again. What you're trying to accomplish, if you're going to have one video, one YouTube for the dealership, and have all different departments, you can just tag them separately. This is service. You can create tabs. Here's my service videos. They can sort. You just have to optimize and tag them correctly. If your point is, hey, I'm going to brand my guy Ted is my service person and I'm going to make create him and ask ask Ted the service guy and that's your sort of focus and your shtick well then yeah maybe you create a separate channel for them but in just general terms I'd have one YouTube channel for your whole dealership with all different tabs but to Ted's point I would make sure that the you are also posting these videos on your website because if somebody just gets to your website without even going on YouTube, you know, that's where you want to find them. So it, it takes a little work, but this is where having a good video partner who's going to help educate you on how to shoot videos as well as create platforms to help launch these, that's important as well. Okay. I just, I, this next question is great. Um, is it better to look at the camera at the beginning or end or just narrate on a video? Uh, it, in my mind, it depends on, again, what you're trying to accomplish. I personally think video is great uh, because it's people. Now, again, you may have some people who are not um, comfortable in front of the camera. Well, then why would you make them do your videos, right? So I personally always like, and again, depends on what you're trying to do. If it's a salesperson, Sending an email out, well, then they better see your face. If I'm a salesperson doing the video, I, you better see me. Now, some people may turn around and say, on my walk-around videos, I don't want to have a salesperson tied to that because if they leave me or quit or whatever, now I have to reshoot. Again, always go. I always go back to what's the purpose of the video, right? If it's a true walk-around, you want it to be evergreen, not tied to anybody, then just voiceover, but you should then frame it and start every video the same. Welcome to Ted's Ford, where we do blah, blah, blah. Welcome, here's our, here's our 2015 Ford Fusion, and let me tell you a little bit about it. But you have a script and you go. But again, if it's an F&I manager, if it's welcome to the f and I'm your service director, whatever, I, people connect with people. Right, that's really the key. So you got to decide. So it could be varied. I would, I would, I totally agree with Glenn. I've written on uh, on the subject matter. I can't remember the lady that uh, the, the 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 research doctor, but she uh, did research on how we connect with uh, the the facial expressions and and depending on the purpose of the video, if you're trying to build trust, you need to show your face. Um, you know, walk around videos, like he said, if, uh, you know, uh, the voice is just fine because the consumer wants the content of the car, that's what they're coming for. But as far as um, sales follow-up, um, introduction, person, personnel introduction, why buy, testimonials, um, those all need to be uh, facial recognition 
with the customer, you know, for a lack of a better term, falling in love with your dealership. All right, we've actually got another one here. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing the short answer to this would be no, but I'm, I'm very interested to hear your guys' take on this, and maybe we could give the person that asked this question a little ammunition. Um, should the dealership require all videos be approved by management? Hmm. Well, Glenn, you want to start that one? Well, I think that it, it, I have always believed that you, it's middle, it's yes and no, meaning that I would, if I'm going to do anything in a dealership, I train people to do it correctly. Then I watch how they're doing it to make sure they're doing it correctly. And then there is always some sort of accountability stop checkpoint you know, so for instance, in this case, do all videos have to be approved? Well, it depends on what you're doing. So if we're doing a walk around, well, who's training the person to do the walk around? So we, we have to have someone who says, well, here's how we're going to do the walk around here at Ted's Ford, right? This is the way we do. There's a process. It isn't Glenn's version of how he does a video. It's not Brian's. It's not Ted's. It's not whoever. It's here's a process for how we make videos at our dealership. For walk around videos, here's how we do videos for email. Here's how we do videos when we're doing sales videos, right? So it has to be a process. Once there's a process and we agree upon it, then we get trained how to do that. And part of the training is let me show you how to do it. Let me watch you make them. And I need to see every video that you make until I get to the point of going, okay, you got the hang of it. So now maybe I, instead of checking everyone, I check every fifth one, or maybe I check it, but I never stop checking. The minute you stop checking is the minute you get a surprise. So maybe you just say, well, listen, every week I'm just going to randomly go look at some of Ted's videos just to see if they are conforming to what we did or if they drift. Now, you can always have creativity. You tell your people, listen, if you try something or you want to try something or you found a new technique, great, let's talk about it. Don't go out and do it without us all putting our brains around. Because, again, that's that connected stuff. Because left to people's devices, they may think it's great, but it's not connecting with your message. It's not connecting with your branding. Everywhere people find you, we want to reinforce it. So that's why I was saying having a here's how we start the videos. Here's what we say. Here's the first script. Here's what we do. Here's what we highlight. Here's how we finish, right? So everything should be checked until it doesn't need to be checked, but we still check. We just might, you know, there, there, there's always a point that we keep checking. It's just, we don't just, plop, you know, rush our hands and go, oh, good, Ted knows how to do videos, and I never look again, because then Ted gets his inner Steven Spielberg, and he's off doing something crazy, and we're like, how the hell did you end up over there? Because I didn't look, right? So that, that's my response, and I see too many dealerships not having a process in place. They usually come to video because they found somebody. They either went to a show, they saw Ted, yeah, we're going to go do video. They come back, and they find somebody who has a video. Hey, I always see you guys shooting videos. Do you know how to do videos? Yeah, okay, I need you to go do the walk-arounds. All right, and they never look at it versus saying, well, if we're going to use video, what's the process? Just like you have a process to sell cars, just like you have a process to answer your phone, process to deliver, process to check in a car for service. Well, here's a process for how we do videos. I'm going to I'm going to agree with Glenn uh, on this. The with his answer about the the process needs to be approved, not necessarily checking every video when it comes in, and it and it depends upon the type of video. The uh, the inventory videos, obviously, once you have a process down, and, and that's more readily checked than, say, video email follow-up uh, to, to, you know, can you imagine having to check every video email follow-up, which, you know, um, it sits on somebody's desk until you approve that. I've always been a proponent of controlling the content, uh, a dealership controlling the content of what goes out, what gets disseminated to the customer, to the shopper. Um, so yeah, like like Glenn said, the once the process has been laid out, then then it's it's a matter of uh, 
you know, scaling back and just checking randomly. And it depends upon the videos that you're putting out. Inventory videos, once again, um, are the easiest check because you just go to the website and, it, you know, they're there. Um, and those are the fastest produced, those are the fastest put up, and those are the, you know, the, the easily is, uh, the most easiest to be checked uh, versus um, the more personal ones that are being um, exchanged with um, with the consumers. And, that, and then that goes back to, um, does is a, is a dealership confident with the, the salespeople just picking up their cell phone and sending videos um, without um, a dealership having a video marketing strategy that would encapsulate a, a platform that gives the dealership some control of content of actually what's going out. Hey, I want this why buy video, I want this um, personal introduction, and I want this testimony to go out with every email that we're sending out instead of just the salesperson going out willy nilly. Hey, I tell you what, if you come in and buy this car today, I'm going to give you four free tires. What? Um, you said, you know, so uh, there is, there is some checks and balances with with that. All right. Um, actually, this this question, uh, I believe this, this is in reference to what we when we first started talking about service videos. How do we get started with service videos? Which repairs and how technical should we get? Um, I would again. I always throw it back on everybody because sometimes we overthink these things. I would turn around and go into your service manager, or if you're the service manager who's asking this question, I walk into your service manager, the office, or talk to your advisors and say, "What are the top ten things that people always ask you questions about?" And that's where I'd start. Right? How? Why do I have to change my oil every X? What's the difference between this oil and that oil? Uh, what, 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 how often do we recommend in my area, right? Because I live in New Jersey, so we change our wiper blades twice a year before, win before winter and after winter because there's a lot of salt on the road, right? So you say, listen, or what's, uh, somebody might say, well, how do I know when I need to change my tires or how do I know proper inflation or how do I check this or how do I, what should I keep in the trunk of my car on a hot day or on a winter day or whatever. Like those top things, you probably have a hundred of them. If you really, all your advisors sat there and said, what are the questions that people ask? What's, what simple thing like, what is that arrow? You know, which, how do I know which side of my car the gas tank's on? I always forget, oh, there's that little arrow there. What does this dashboard light mean, right? All of these things are easy to do. So technical things, again, depending how deep you wanna go, how to change a tire, that's technical, that might be later on, but you could probably have 20 other things of just why, not necessarily the how, the why videos. Why do I need to keep my tires, you know, here's three tips for you guys who are driving in the summer. It's summertime right now, right? Beautiful day in New Jersey, people are on the highways. Here's three things that are gonna improve your gas mileage this summer. One is properly inflated tires, uh, making sure you have this making sure you have this, right? Don't overthink it because it's sitting right in front of you. You're, you just haven't asked. One of, the, uh, one of the main reasons for creating video for your, your service department is to build trust with your consumers and obviously uh, increase the bottom line with your service department, um, increase service appointments. Um, you know, we talk about with the service department, you know, like Glenn said, <clears throat> what do people ask about the most? Also take a look at what are some of the services that you may be losing to your competitors? Maybe some of the services that uh, um, or um, well basically that uh, more services that you want that are more that are profitable um, that your dealership needs more of some of the sales that you have that are going elsewhere to get their uh, future services done. And those videos don't need to be uh, from, and, and, and speaking of those videos, they don't need to be um, A to Z, how to fix the problem. They just need to be basically overviews to build trust with the consumer going, hey, we're experts, this is, this is the, the problem. This is what could happen to your vehicle if you don't get it fixed. This is what you should look for. If you do have uh, your mechanic, take a look at it. Um, and these are the tools you're gonna need. They're kind of expensive. 
Um, and this is the success rate that we've had in our dealership and the Hasty customers, and and maybe maybe throw in a testimonial uh, uh, with a, with a happy customer that had that service fixed. Um, and 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 you know and and divide those between service and how tos so have a different like the technical versus the service. Um, there there it's a different segment market. One one is the the how to side and one is the the service revenue side. All right. Um, actually, that, that that's that's the last, that's the only question we have in for right now. Um, if you guys want to continue, um, I'll, I'll I will uh, chime in as soon as we get another one. Awesome. Glenn, is there anything um, spurred that you uh, thought you wanted to jump yeah, in and talk about? Yeah, sure. The the uh, you know again, I I think the whole a lot of what we talk about when we're working with our clients, um, as I said, they come to us for a reason, and they want to work with us for a reason because we sit down with them and we start right from the beginning and ask them about their business. Right? It's easy for someone to come in. You know, here's video. You need this and people don't understand why or how to use it. You know, I want to know their business. I want to know what they're capable of, right? So we could sit here till we're blue in the face and talk about all these great videos you could do. The question is, can you? And then help them prioritize to say, all right, well, let's shoot one. The automotive industry is so bent on the 30 day cycle. Sometimes people get they don't have, uh, they're not able to think long term. But if you said to yourself, listen, we're going to build out all these videos over the next six months. I know that's a bad word, six months. But if you say, hey, listen, we're going to start build, we're going to start with these two. Then we're going to do these two. Then we're going to do these. And as people get better, then we can say, oh, well, we're going to do this and we're going to do this. We're going to do this. It's if you start always as a consumer, if you start with all of the information and questions that your customers are asking, or sending, asking, be willing to reach out to your customers and say, where, where are the friction points in the buying process? Where are things that you wish you knew ahead of time, right? Most of your customers are going to be happy. So you're not like, you're not going out chasing the ones who didn't buy, but your customers, hey, can, can I ask you a question? What, will, what could we have done better? If we're, we're using video more now, what, what would you have liked to have seen during your buying process or shopping process? If we provided it in video, what would you like? They'll tell you what they were. Oh, you know, it would have been nice to see a video about F and I. That was a little confusing. If I knew some of that stuff ahead of time, I could have thought. Or I didn't think it was going to take that long. Or you know what? You know, you called me up and told me my brakes were, but I didn't really know what that meant. Versus, hey, I'm sending you a video. Here's a new. Here's a new brake. Here's your brake. Notice the difference. We want to be able to get your approval to do this. So there's a lot of other ways to use video. The key is ask. Know what your capabilities are to do it, to generate it. It could sound great. Remember, this is the, I always call it the turtle. This is turtle. I'd rather you put up videos at a pace that you can do forever than drop everything, run over to this side. We're going to put on 30 videos and everybody's, oh, God, disruptive, 30 videos, and then nobody wants to do them again because there was a pain, they were a pain in the ass versus saying, we are going to focus on videos. Let's get everybody in the room. What are the first two that we're going to do? Or what's the first one that we all think is the most important one? Let's shoot it. Let's see how hard it was to get it, to edit it, to put it up. Or we have a part video partner and the partner's guiding us. What can we commit to at a comfortable pace to be able to do this and chart it out and say, listen, by the end of the year, we're going to have it. Because Hopefully, the F&I video is an evergreen video, meaning you're not going to have to change it because it's the why, why do finance with you or what your thing is and, hey, the why service and the why buy and some of the walk-arounds are going to be evergreens. Then you can play around with, hey, tips. But even the tips, you're not changing it. It's just making a list and saying, I'm going to fill them and then be able to share them out and let people know that they're available. And that's where you work with a company like ours, who would be from the SEO side, the website, how to push those videos out, how to market with those videos, how to put them out in social media, how to optimize them on your website. So to Ted's point, they're found in search. But take a breath. If you like what you hear, understand this is a shift 
a new piece, it has to connect through all of your marketing at a pace that you can handle or else it will go onto the trash bin with all of the other great ideas that you got that you ran to for a month and then just it didn't work quick enough or it overwhelmed everybody or you got a lot of pushback and you look back and go, yeah, that was a pretty good idea, but uh, I don't know why we didn't do it. Turtle, a little bit at all times. For anybody following at home, that's on page 27 in his book. He talks about um, the search engine rewarding consistency. We didn't, we really didn't talk about that, but uh, you know, posting uh, five videos a week versus 20 a week, um, and it and it speaks to the fact of uh, the turtle wins a race, um, especially when it comes to that. So. Um, one thing I wanted to address, I know we're talking about video, and we've consumed this with video, um, but when it comes to the, and for our audience, just about the whole connected marketing, can you just speak to what you see as the most common missed opportunities within a dealership um, about the disconnect of, on the marketing side? Sure. Of all, of all, yeah. yeah, of all more. Okay, so yeah. here, here's what spurred the book was when someone we 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 do audits, you know, so somebody will hire us just to rip through everything, and what we find is you have your offline marketing, which is what we'll call, or in some cases, people will still refer to it as traditional marketing, meaning I'm doing radio. I'm doing some TV commercials, I'm doing some direct mail pieces, I'm doing some email campaigns, right? And that's over, just think of it as a big pile to your left. And then I have my website and I'm doing some SEO with whoever and I'm doing some paid search and maybe I'm doing some social media and I'm checking my reviews and I'm putting pictures and I'm doing some video and that's your online presence and that's in front of you in a big pile. And to your right is everything that happens in the store, all of your, you know, uh, table tents and or your handouts or signs or your people, right? So all of these should work harmoniously, meaning if I'm going to run a commercial, well, with a specific message about a specific vehicle, the question is, usually every single one of those has a website, meaning you're, but who decided where we're sending that traffic? Probably the traditional agency just said, ah, send them to the home page. Well, is that the best place? I don't know. If it's a specific vehicle with a specific offer for a specific, hey, 4th of July campaign, why wouldn't I have a landing page built on the website for that? So when somebody clicks or goes to it and it's, you know, tedsford.com forward slash fourth, and when they type that in, it goes to a page that has the same messaging, same look, same feel, everything, and they're there. And then there's a specific phone number that we know is tracking for this campaign, and the form gets filled. But then, more importantly, where the – so that's a big disconnect. The offline traditional people are not at the same table with the online people. Instead of working together saying, all right, and that's partly because – some uh, offline people, agencies now are trying to be more full service and they are, oh, I got a couple people who do digital. The problem is the mentality of the ownership sometimes is still traditional, Ben. It, even internally, it's not connected. So, right, now I'm not getting on the phone with them because, well, uh, we do that. Why aren't we? We can't. And then it becomes a contest about who's doing better, right? The other angle where it's disconnected is into the store with the people. I mean, everyone on this, the, everyone who works in a dealership, I'm sure if you went and talked to your BDC or salespeople or your receptionist and quizzed them on the specials that are out there or things that you're doing, you may run the risk of them not knowing because it's happened to me. I've called up dealerships that we're working with ask about a special that they have running from a TV commercial or online and the receptionist goes I have no idea what you're talking about or even salespeople or I walk into the dealership and there's absolutely nothing you're doing this great 4th of July campaign for these vehicles with this coloring and this oh look at that beautiful stuff I walk into dealership and there's nothing anywhere around for me to feel like I'm in the right place 
So that's what I'm. So that's why we always say you got to step back further and say, well, what are we doing? We're running a Fourth of July campaign for the Ford Fusion. Great. What are we willing to do as a dealership? Well, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. Fantastic. Let's get everyone on the phone and have a strategy call. And you, as the dealer, remember they work for you. Here's what we're doing for Fourth of July. We want to focus on the fusion. This is our messaging. This is what we want to do. Okay, traditional folks. What can you do through your channels? Oh, well, we'll do a direct mail piece. Fantastic. What does it look like? Where are we going to send them to? Online people, what can you do? Well, we'll do this, but hey, direct mail. When you send a direct mail piece out, I'll tell you what page to send them to. So www.tomsford5 forward slash X, I'll have the page built. Fantastic. By the way, people in the store, salespeople, we're going to send you, give you the direct mail piece, plus we're also going to create some collateral to hang up in the window or table tent on there so we all know what's going on. See, that's connected versus online going, well, what do you want me to do? Yeah, do something on Ford Fusion. Okay, great. They're off doing something. Direct mail's doing something. People in the store may or may not know what's going on. You know, that's where this disconnect comes and you're losing money and you're losing opportunities because if the people are calling you up, something triggered them to call up. And if your people on the phone don't know what the heck you're doing, meaning what what uh, campaign they're doing or what new initiatives going on, you lose your opportunity and they go, oh, you don't even know what's going on. Oh, you're, you're that type of a car dealer that doesn't know. Oh, it's all bait and switch, whatever, versus, nope, we know exactly what it is. Come in and everyone, it's seamless. I saw it on TV. I come to your website. I see it. I got a mail piece that looks the exact same thing. I walked in the dealership. There's a big sign with the same thing. I talked to the people. They're like, yep, this is what we're doing. And they just seamlessly move people through the funnel towards purchase right that is connected and so if you take a step back and say to yourself who runs my marketing and if you're saying well yeah I got some guy who does this I got somebody who does that at the end of the day who's setting up campaigns if you don't have a strategy call with all your vendors at the table you're doing it wrong if you're having that's not to say you don't have a side conversation with the traditional to say okay show me the metrics what worked what didn't work and what are we doing to improve your channel online people I want to see all the information that you did what are we doing to improve your channel should we still be using that channel should we still be using Facebook okay should we change something? what are you going to change to make it better and then in store what are we doing here that's those still should happen it's that general strategy call of what's the initiative for, like right now, you should be thinking about Labor Day. So somewhere in the middle of July, you should get all your vendors to the table and say, here's what we're doing in, on Labor Day. I want ideas of how you're going to push this out. What are you going to do to push this messaging out through the channels you oversee? That's a whole different philosophy than what happens in a lot of dealerships, and that will save you money make it more efficient and make it easier for you to connect with your uh, customers because you'll keep them longer because it's the same messaging over and over and over and that's why looking outside of automotive sometimes helps because they do it a lot better sometimes than we do awesome Glenn Thank you. do we have questions okay. Actually, you know what? Right now, right now, we don't have any more questions in. Is there is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience? Then? Oh, I want to thank them for joining us today, for definitely sure. And uh, I think, uh, and I also want to thank Glenn for joining us and uh, imparting your wisdom and uh, everything that you had to offer. Yeah, and same thing here. You know, we're we're. We're here to help. So if anyone's on this or sees this later, uh, if I can be of any assistance, you know, I'm pretty easy to find online. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn. You can reach me at Facebook or just straight to my email, Glenn at two ends at PCPcompanies.com. Like I said, I'm here to look at stuff and help. I'm not, you know, again, listen, business is business, but I do a lot of phone calls throughout the week with people who just call up and say, hey, can I ask you a question? Hey, can I run something by you? What do you think about this? So take advantage of it. If you have a question, get it answered because, uh, and Ted's the same way, and a lot of the people who are on the auto success um, 
webinars are exactly the same way. That's why we're here. We're trying to help everybody get better at what they do, and we have no problem answering questions. Um, so again, you don't got to be a client for, for us to talk. I'd rather get your questions answered. That's going to get you more educated and empowered to go make the right decisions with your current vendors to m master your marketing. Great. Well, thanks, guys. Um, everybody on the call, thanks for joining us today. Uh, Ted and Glenn, great information. Um, I'd, I'd love to have you back again here soon. Um, for everybody that's on this call, you're going to get an email from me and, and thanking you for attending this webinar. Now, if there's somebody in the dealership that you feel would benefit from this information, this webinar was recorded, and so you can just reply to me, and I'll get you, I'll get you a link to the recording. Um, also, if, if, if you have suggestions for future webinars, other than, you know, make the cameras work, I apologize to everybody for that, we're having some type of technical difficulty today, but if you do have some suggestions, please, you know, reply to my email, that, that is, it is an automated email that goes out, but it comes from my real email address, this is Brian with Auto Success, so please, give me your suggestions uh, for topics or, or ways we can make this better for you. Uh, Glenn and Ted, is there anything else you'd like to share before we uh, let our audience go today? Have a great 4th of July. Sell a lot. Yes, exactly. Have a great 4th. Thanks, everybody. Have a great afternoon. All right. Take care, guys.